Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Dr. Dawson, and today we are going to talk about feline leukemia virus, which if you haven't already, go back and check out my video on feline immunodeficiency virus, which is a different virus in the same family. Now, I already talked about it in this other video, but feline leukemia virus is a retrovirus. Now, I'm not gonna go into the specifics, but suffice to know that feline leukemia virus, or FELV as I'll probably call it for the rest of the video, is a type of virus that is called retrovirus. And it's a part of a group in that that likes to cause cancer. And it's onco-retroviral uh, is what we will call it. The thing with feline leukemia virus is that a lot of times it's very severe disease. Cats that are infected with it often will not have super long to live. The median survival time is about two and a half years once they are diagnosed, uh, which is a pretty short period of time, all things considered. So what types of symptoms does a cat with feline leukemia virus tend to have? Well, basically, let me just break it down into a couple of specific things, but every th symptom that is associated with it has to do with how the retrovirus goes in and it will replace, either replace some of the host DNA or it will insert itself into the host's DNA, either mutating the host's genetic code, so their cells, or killing the cell outright. Um, and so most of the symptoms are a result of one of these two things. Sometimes cats will start out with having some hair loss, loss of appetite, just being lethargic, not themselves. And some cats can live for years without even knowing that they have this. Uh, it can be a very slowly progressive disease, um, or it can be pretty quick. Now, other symptoms that can be seen are things like anorexia, inf skin infections, bladder or respiratory infections, pancytopenia, which is a fancy term meaning that their blood cells are lacking, and that goes for white blood cells and red blood cells alike. The other thing is that sometimes it'll cause just straight anemia, it can cause some masses to form, or it can cause leukemia, which is obviously what the virus is named after. So how is feline leukemia virus spread? Well, FELV, unlike FIV, is typically spread through contact. Um, and this can be through things, social behavior like grooming each other. It can be through food bowls. It can be through litter boxes. And most of the time it's not spread from mother to offspring, but that's only because the, the queens oftentimes become infertile or they have abortions or early embryonic death and the kittens are lost before they're born. If however they do go full term while they are infected, it is possible to have that form of transmission as well. So are all cats that are infected with this virus doomed? Are they all going to die? Um, well, the answer is no, they're not. So actually about 30% of those that are infected are going to develop a immune response fast enough and strong enough to actually be able to kill off this virus. However, usually when they kill this virus off, especially if it's a little bit later stages, it can actually become latent. So they kill off all the viral particles, but because retroviruses put their DNA into the host's DNA, sometimes it's there and there's nothing you can do about it. Once the viral particles are gone, the DNA is still there and it can be reactivated sometimes at a later date. So a stressful event or just old age or some other disease can stimulate this virus to come back out, start reproducing again and cause further and more severe symptoms. Now the other 70% are unable to mount in a good enough immune response to actually fight this virus off. And once the virus is able to spread to the bone marrow, it's considered to be there permanently. Uh, there's not a lot of ways to get rid of it at that point. Even if for some reason the cat was able to kill off all the viral particles, they're going to most likely develop severe disease in the near future, if not um, maybe a little bit longer. So how do we diagnose it? Well, unlike FIV, which looked for antibodies, for FELV, we look for the virus itself. Um, and that's because one, when they have an active infection, often we're going to see symptoms and we're going to be able to see the virus um, because the virus is reproducing at a lot more rapid rate than something like FIV or feline immunodeficiency virus. And so we just do a blood test that tests for an antigen, which an antigen is basically the virus. And 
A confirmatory test may be performed, but if your cat tests positive, most likely they have an active infection at the moment. So what can we do for treatment? And what is the prognosis of one of these, these kittens that gets this virus? Well, as we already mentioned, treatment is pretty much non-existent. And that's not because we don't try or don't wanna try. But unfortunately with a retrovirus in general, we can't get rid of it. The only treatment that we can really do is supportive care. We can make them feel better. We can treat symptoms. We can prevent secondary infections from coming in because just like FIV, sometimes it will just kill enough white blood cells to make them more prone to secondary infection. But once a cat gets feline leukemia virus, they're most likely going to have it for the rest of their lives. And 70% of those that are infected are going to have severe disease probably within a few years. As I said, the median survival time is two and a half years um, from when they're diagnosed. Is it all doom and gloom? Is this all unfortunate and bad? And am I just being over dramatic about it? No, I don't think I'm being over dramatic, but it's not all doom and gloom either because we do have a vaccine. And unlike the tried and failed FIV vaccine, the feline leukemia vaccine is actually pretty good. So it actually has a really good rate of preventing transmission and it has a pretty significant chance of getting enough immune response to prevent the virus from actually staying there permanently. And although no vaccine is perfect, all vaccines can be beaten either by a high enough pathogenic load or immunodeficiency in general. The feline leukemia vaccine is pretty good. The American Association of Feline Practitioners, which is a group of veterinarians who basically create guidelines for the rest of us about how to treat and do things with cats. They've created a document about cat vaccines and I'll link that down below. But basically it's not a core vaccine, meaning it's not one that they recommend for every single cat. Not every cat needs to have the feline leukemia vaccine. But we do recommend that almost all kittens get at least two doses. And the reason is, is that if a kitten you bring into your house, you get sick, you have to move to an apartment. Sometimes that cat will end up in a place where it's outdoors at least part of the time, and then it increases their risk of getting it. And if they've at least had two doses, they're much more likely to fight off the in initial infection and not allow it to go latent. Um, so even if it's years down the road, having those two doses of vaccine is going to be better than not having any at all. Now, any indoor cat that has never had it, that's, you know, 10, 12 years old, do they really need it? No, there's not a lot of risk. So in cats that are living in a closed household, such as in your apartment, in your house, it's not a big deal. If your cat is an indoor outdoor cat that is living on a farm, then you probably should consider doing this vaccine. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, if you already are here at the end, hopefully you enjoyed watching it and hopefully this answered all of your questions about feline leukemia virus. If it didn't, make sure you leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer it down there. And if you haven't already, leaving a like on this video would really help me out. Or if you didn't like it, hitting the dislike button. Um, but if you haven't already, I would appreciate if you guys would subscribe. Somewhere around 95% of my viewers right now are not subscribed to the channel. So I understand you guys have lives and maybe this type of content isn't the most interesting, but if you do have an interest, please subscribe um, and I will do my best to keep providing this type of content for you guys. Have a fantastic rest of your day. We'll see you in the next video.